<laughs> exactly. Well then. Um, no, what I was telling you and what I wanted to convey is that to be happy in your body and to celebrate your body, you have to feed your body. And that's part of what is most important. That's why we, we need nutritionists. That's why we need therapists. That's why we need psychiatrists. That's why we have eating disorder inpatient rehab centers. These are all things and tools that are very, very necessary and helpful to help us get back to the basics, the basics that we were taught in kindergarten about eating your fruits and your vegetables and your protein. And the reasons why you did all that when you were in kindergarten is because you felt strong and healthy, so you'd go outside and play. It's the same thing as an adult. You need to eat nutritiously, work out, get a little exercise in order to live in your body and be happy. If you're just worried about how it looks on the outside, you really are an empty shell of a person. And I mean that from a personal standpoint, that's how I felt. And I was breaking down my body systematically by punishing it. So mm -hmm. now it's a lot easier to live in my body because I can enjoy life. I can enjoy my friends and food and everything that you're supposed to enjoy. So I think it's a shame that so many people are stuck in this and it's so socially acceptable, which is why I did create Fed Up Inc. and is why I work for Raider programs in eating disorder rehab um, outreach because it's so important for me to make people break away from this as much as possible and start to enjoy food again and enjoy their friends. I, I don't know who you were. I know who you are now, just, mm -hmm. just a limited degree. But right. you sit in front of me, a beautiful woman, voluptuous, and carefully taken care of and groomed. It no longer comes with that judgmental, controlled, antagonistic voice. It now is what? No, in fact, something that I do with Fed Up Inc. and, and with my um, eating disorder prevention program is we actually have a name for that antagonizing judgmental voice, the one that tells you you shouldn't eat chocolate cake or you look fat in this or anything negative about somebody else's body, anything related to negative talking about food or bodies of anybody, it could be your food, your body, whatever it is, that's something that we actively have a, a campaign against. Really? I can't tell you the name of it because we're about to trademark it. Oh, but, nice. <laughs> but it's something that I do and I have all the kids doing the program and it's something that's very helpful. Um, basically, it's just a tool to stop all of the negative talk. That's something that I use every day. It's something I still use to this day because society is set up to um, throw these things at you, throw that Us Weekly cover with the latest bikini bodies. And there's always going to be that flicker where you're like, oh, oh no, maybe I do need to lose 10 pounds. But then I remember right away I can use that tool and I can get back to my serenity. Back to your serenity, mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. Health is a lot about joy. Yeah, it's a lot about it's joy. Celebrating life, about heart, it's right. about connection, it's about, it's, it's about not being so occupied with your image mm -hmm. that you can't be who you were imaged to be. Right. Um, you mentioned that when you were with your friends or social events that you were antagonistic to them, you were not pleasant to be around because your brain was so occupied with, mm. I must be this way, I must be that way. You're not, and that that was so opposite of who you really were because right. who you really were is very generous and caring and charitable and philanthropic. Um, very giving, you know, I, very patient. And those are all things that I couldn't be because I was stuck inside. Have you gone back to being able to laugh from your gut? Oh yeah, and I actually have feelings now, which is nice. I didn't know what feelings were for most of my life. So when I first started understanding what emotions were and what they, how you really were supposed to feel them, I actually had a list that I would carry around with me and I'd have to read it if I suspected that I was being triggered and going down a certain path with my addiction. Um, and that's how I learned to do things like cry if it was appropriate or be really happy. Basic things that you would never think about, those were things that I was deprived from. And that's what the addiction feeds, that's the numbing out and, and those things that people talk about. Do you ever just do something wild and off base and, and it just feels like, oh, you freed yourself up? Yeah, pretty much all the time. All the time? <laughs>
And before <laughs> I lived my whole life. And before? Before I was super calculated and meticulous and I made lots of lists and everything had to be super controlled and super in order. If it wasn't, it really bothered me. And now I'm very, very spontaneous and I'm laid back and I'm easy going and I don't care if the kids come over and make a mess and I don't care if my dogs are barking. It, none of that bothers me mm. because I'm just in a very different place where there's no, it's, it's not, it doesn't bother me because it's just, doesn't matter. Mm. So that is free. Yeah. Your spirit so is free. Very, so my spirit is very free now. Yeah. So eating disorders can be compared to a prison. Absolutely. And you've walked free. And the odd thing right. is no one was locking you in there. No, I was locking myself in there. That's the sad, that's the sad part. And that's why I've committed my life to this. Cause I think that no one else should have to be in that position because you know, I was successful then, but I'm far more successful now when I'm able to grow into the person that I was meant to be and I want to be. So that can show you how much I wasted and how much society is missing from all these people who are really productive people and they're wasting all of their time and energy on these eating disorders and weight obsessions when really they could be creating their own businesses or giving back, or being philanthropic, just being more pleasant or just sharing with their friends. You know, I always enjoy it when I can share a meal with my friends or share a conversation where they're mm -hmm. present. And that's not something I could share with my friends then. Um, they love me dearly and that's why they're good friends of mine, but they put up with a lot. <laughs> so, you know. So the Bridget then and the Bridget now, hands over the Bridget now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, they're very happy with who I became. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.